What happened in my career when my unit discovered that I was an educated person and could write, right? I soon was doing all the work that officers were doing and getting paid as a PFC or a private. So I applied for a commission back then. And you know, Leslie, it just wasn't done. There were no women commanders. So women can't do that. I mean, literally, I was told that. But you know, <laughs> that's where my heart was, you know, and so I, was, I ended up being the company commander of the same unit that I joined, you know, and there were oh, about 275 men and there were three women and I was the company commander. Great. You know? Sounds uh, like it's good to have you in charge. <laughs> you were also with a, a, a chemical unit, weren't you? NBC? I was, yeah, I was uh, as a captain. When I went on active duty, I was a nuclear, biological and chemical agent officer. And um, I did that for like five years. And I was with a command that their mission was to train the Army Reserve to prepare for mobilization. I did that. What happened to you on 9-11? Hmm. Yeah, I was there. I was working in OSD, in programs analysis and evaluation. In the Pentagon. In the Pentagon. And I called home and I said to Terry, I said, Terry, I said, what's going on? Because nobody really, in those days, we didn't stream live, you know. And when I'm on the phone with him, the plane hit. The Pentagon, that you know, was a terrible thing. But we're all there, you know, all of us. Four military officers in cubes. And, and, um, and I was near a, a wedge that had a window. And pictures fell off, the desk moves, you know. It didn't come in, but I could look up. And you know how you look up between the rings at the Pentagon? Smoke. So we knew that something, I thought a bomb had hit. And Terry was on the phone and he said, are you okay? And I said, something just, a bomb just hit. So he knew I was alive. I mean, it was terrible. None of us knew where we were going. We didn't know how to get home. Cell phones didn't work, nothing worked. And for months and months and months afterwards, it was like, Everywhere I go, I, we carried protective masks. I carried protective masks on the train, in my car, everywhere I went. It's something that, I, that really shaped me um, as an officer. Yeah. And um, yeah, and I, I did feel vulnerable, but we were all in it together, you know, and we were fortunate because all those people, for months afterwards, people would come back with burn bandages. So it was a, a completely surreal experience yep having suddenly this thing happening at yeah. home. Yep. But you know, I met you, when I met you, um, it was, I was talking about my career. Yes. And how the skills from, from my career, yes. likewise it would be the same with yours, yes. can be very useful in this job. Absolutely. Right? Absolutely. No, when <laughs> I heard about your background and being an investigative reporter, I thought, okay, it's time, right? Yeah. It's yeah. time. Yeah. But I, to I told the story of having, um, you know, that, that uh, National Guard units were yes. having to do patrols in Baghdad. Yes. That's right. In Humvees That's with right. no armor on the bottom. That's right. And the guard and I did this story right. for yep. 60 minutes, yep. and uh, I, which ca we caused trouble. You did. Yep. And you and, were in the Pentagon yeah. at that time. Well, and at that time, you know, because of my background in the Army Reserve and my loyalty to the Guard and the Reserve, you know, that really caught our attention. When you came in and said, oh, what's going on? You know, and it was 60 minutes, right? Yes. Um, well, someone has to pay attention, there, right? Yes. And, and it's true today. It's true here in the 5th District. It's true in Virginia, right? Right. It's true in Florida in Parkdale, and when a person like you comes along with the skill set that you have, that's kind of unusual, at least in southwestern Virginia politics in the 14 years I've been here, 13. Yeah, 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 yeah. 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 It's only recent events that has, yeah. has forced me into realizing yeah. well, no, it's, it's time. exciting. Well, and it's not a coincidence that all this has happened because of the dastardly president we have. Yeah. I mean, the fact that women are finally saying, we've always been this way. For some reason, we haven't been able to do it. We know why, you know. But now, it's our time. It is our it's time. It's such a time as this, and we're standing up, and we're taking that chance. It's not a chance. It's you campaign, and, and you speak truth to power. Hmm?
speak truth to power. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm for that. <laughs> you know, exactly. no, I am, and you know, I'm excited, and that's why, um, you know, I've been retired, and I've been really doing a lot of things around here, but now I have time to work on this campaign. Yes, I have time. <laughs> no, I'll make time. Yeah, you because know, you, there are a lot of things you care about right now that you would uh, like to absolutely, see Absolutely, absolutely.